Good morning, afternoon or evening wherever you are. I'm Paul Clark and welcome to my studio. Now what have I got for you lovely lot today? Well a few of you recently have asked me if I'd paint something glass-like, something reflective. And it occurred to me that I don't think I've ever painted anything like a glass vase before in my career. So we're going to be having a go at this lovely little still life with a pink glass vase. So come and join me and we'll both learn something and paint the step by step together. Okay, so for today's materials, my paper is some Arsh Cold Press. It's £140, 100% cotton. It's on a block, so it won't need stretching, but any decent watercolour paper will do. And my colours for today are Cadmium Yellow, Yellow Ochre, Cobalt Blue, Green Gold, which is by Daniel Smiths, Alizarin Crimson, Magenta, Cadmium Red and Burnt Umber and just two brushes from my range, a number 12 and number 6 round. Okay, so here is the picture reference which I got from Pixabay, thank you very much. But as you can see, I've taken away that funny bit of string and added in a few apples. And here is the pencil sketch, which as always is free to download from my website, link in the description below. Now a little drawing tip when you are sketching things like a vase which is symmetrical it's always a good idea to put a centre line down the middle. This will just simply help you see the two sides more evenly. And I'm adjusting all the time. Just feel your way into the drawing putting in these very sketchy loose guidelines just to help you locate roughly things in the right place without committing yourself to any strong lines. You could even measure from the outside edges to the centre line just to check you're getting things roughly in the right place. And the ellipse at the bottom here, because you're looking slightly down at it, will be wider than it will appear at the top. Another simple trick is to just draw half the vase again with a centre line, then with a piece of tracing paper trace it round, flip it over, rub it down and there we have the opposite shape, nice and accurate. Next I'm taking some masking fluid or drawing gum as I want to preserve just a few little white highlight areas. <music> we go. So next I'm taking some clean water and just painting around the vase and the apples just in a few areas. Then straight in using my number 12 brush some yellow ochre but I'm also going to be dropping into the mix directly on the paper some burnt umber. Of course a little bit of splatting Okay, so my plan is to leave most of the paper white and unpainted, which is quite unusual for me. I usually like to put a lot of colour in around my objects, but it's good to try a different approach. And I don't mind a little bit of this colour sneaking in behind the glass vase. And here for this stronger shadow, still into the wet, some burnt umber. I'm putting in here a little bit of alizarin crimson because you will pick up some reflection off the glass vase. Now for the tulip and some clean water again and then I'm going to drop in straight into the wet some cadmium yellow. Now I'm adding here a little bit of extra warmth with some yellow ochre and then straight into that wet again some magenta. But you could use any bright pink such as Opera Rose or Quinacridone Rose or anything with rose on the end of it. Mm -hmm. 
and for this flower over here which I think is some kind of rose I'm painting in a very watery wash of cadmium yellow then dropping in wet and wet to the shadow color made up of yellow ochre with a little bit of burnt umber Right, so as normal, all my greens are mixed from the cadmium yellow and cobalt blue, but I just add in more of the cobalt blue to get darker values. And I've now switched to my smaller number six brush. Now for these little stalks and stems, the number six brush with a pointed end is perfect. Just lift the brush off the paper to get those fine tapered ends. And here I'm using some yellow ochre, but it's got a little bit of green in it from the palette. And as I often say, if you can paint these with one quick stroke, it's always going to look more natural. While it's still wet I'm dropping in a little bit of that dark green mix. Now flowers are things which I don't often paint and especially as there are so many really good flower painting tutorials here on YouTube but as I always say it's good to challenge yourself. for the center of the rose here a very watery burnt umber again using my number six brush so now we need to let this totally dry so it's a perfect time for a short break and what about a little snifter of a pink gin? Okay, so make sure everything has totally dried. Then I'm painting a very even wash of a mix of alizarin crimson and the magenta over the complete vase. Now you can see some of those green stalks and stems hadn't totally dried, so they're going a little bit fuzzy, but I think that's fine. It'll give the illusion of sitting behind glass. That's my excuse anyway. And while still wet, dropping in a much stronger value of the same color. And to darken the mix a little bit, dropping in a touch of cobalt blue and dropping in here a few blobs of clean water, which hopefully might create a nice glass effect. 
bringing out some more details here with my number six brush. Now I'm going to let this totally dry then I'm coming back in with exactly the same colour but this time wet on dry to get some crisper edges which will help to give the illusion of glass. And I think I want to pink up this tulip a little bit. Nice watery wash. And now for some final details on the glass vase. And I'm using my mix again of magenta and alizarin crimson. I've also added in a touch of cobalt blue just to get a nice strong dark value. So some masking fluid again because I want to add a few little highlights onto these apples. Okay, so now for the apples and this is where I'm using the Daniel Smith Green Gold. You could mix this colour just by using a lot of yellow but perhaps this time a lemon yellow instead of the cadmium. So I'm now dropping into the green a mix of alizarin crimson and cadmium red. Now you might think that this would make a yucky colour mixing with the green, but the red is strong enough of a colour to overpower the green. But it's important that the red that you drop in is of a stronger consistency of the original wash you're dropping into. And here an even stronger consistency still. And here a couple of clean water blobs which should give some interesting effects. And this apple here I'm painting in exactly the same way. So when those first two apples are dry, I'm painting in the middle one here, and this time I'm painting it in a much greener tone, just so there's a contrast with the other two.
Right, let's get rid of the masking fluid and I'm using a rubber eraser which will also take out any unwanted pencil lines. Right, so I'm just using a very watery pink just to soften some of these edges. A little bit of green here for a few leaves and some shadows on the apple. Just a little bit of clean water here to soften the top edge. And then I'm using some of the red mix again just to put in a few details on the apples. Don't overdo this, it can so easily look overworked. A little bit of very watery burnt umber for a few shadows here and there. And a few dark green details on these leaves here. So here's a little trick for creating that illusion of a dent. So what I'm doing is just simply painting in clean water into a V shape, then dropping in the bottom edge some burnt umber. So you get a nice crisp edge along the bottom and a faded edge along the top. So next I'm just taking a damp brush and softening some of these white edges. That is one of the issues that you get when using masking fluid. It can look a little bit unnatural. So next I'm thinking that everything does look a little bit as if it's floating in space. So I'm re-wetting all along the bottom here and then I'm going to drop in a little bit of alizarin crimson where you'd get the reflection of the glass vase and then some burnt umber underneath the apples here. And a final touch with some nice gooey white gouache straight from the tube just to add a few white sparkles here and there. And there's no doubt that it's these little white sparkles that give that impression of reflective glass. There we go, all done. And this one took me about three hours. Well, I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did and you'll give it a go. Remember what I always say, make it your own. If you want to put a background in, please do. If you want to make the vase a different colour, you can do whatever you like. But the most important thing is that you have fun and you enjoy the experience. So, as ever, please don't forget to like, subscribe if you haven't already. It is free. Leave a comment. I do read every single one, although I can't always reply to them all. And 
I'll look forward to seeing you all again next week for another Watercolour Wednesday. Bottoms up. Cheers now. <laughs>